He publicly shamed me and demanded a divorce, so I shut him out. In front of a room full of friends and family, he shattered my heart with cruel words and demands for a divorce. The humiliation was unbearable, but shutting him out was the only way to uncover the mystery that would redefine my life. It was a warm Saturday evening, the perfect night for a celebration. Our tenth wedding anniversary was supposed to be a joyous occasion, filled with love and laughter. I had spent weeks planning a surprise party for my husband Daniel, inviting our closest friends and family to join us in commemorating a decade of marriage. The house was buzzing with excitement, the air filled with the aroma of delicious food, and the sound of clinking glasses. Daniel arrived late, which was unusual for him. As he walked in, I noticed something was off. His smile seemed forced, and his eyes avoided mine. Happy anniversary, everyone cheered as he walked into the room. He nodded, offering a half-hearted smile before heading straight for the bar. As the evening wore on, Daniel grew more distant, spending most of his time talking to a group of his friends. I tried to engage him, but he brushed me off with curt responses. My heart sank, but I continued to play the perfect hostess, hoping to salvage the night. After dinner, it was time for speeches. Our best friend, Kirli, started with a heartfelt toast, reminiscing about our journey together. As she finished, she handed the floor over to Daniel. He stood up, glass in hand, and cleared his throat. Thank you all for coming tonight, he began, his voice laced with sarcasm. Ten years of marriage, huh? Who'd have thought? The room fell silent, everyone sensing the tension. I have to say, he continued, these ten years have been challenging, and honestly, I'm not sure I can do it anymore. Murmurs of shock rippled through the crowd. My heart pounded in my chest as he went on. So, I've decided it's time for a change. I want a divorce. Fasts filled the room. I stood there, frozen, unable to process what was happening. The man I had loved and devoted my life to was publicly shaming me, tearing our marriage apart in front of everyone we knew. The party ended abruptly, guests leaving in a daze, offering me sympathetic looks and hurried goodbyes. I was left standing alone in the midst of a room that had once been filled with laughter and joy. The reality of Daniel's words slowly sank in, and tears began to stream down my face. I stumbled upstairs to our bedroom, desperate to escape the humiliation. Daniel followed me, his expression unreadable. Why, Daniel? I choked out between sobs. Why did you do this? He shrugged, his face cold and detached. I feel unhappy for a long time, Emma. I thought it was time to be honest. Honest? You call that honesty? You've humiliated me in front of everyone we know. I didn't mean for it to come out like that, he muttered, avoiding my gaze. But it's the truth. I want out. Just like that? I asked, my voice breaking. After ten years, you want to throw it all away. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. It's not working, Emma. We're not working. I need a fresh start. The words stung, cutting deep into my heart. I turned away, unable to look at him any longer. Fine, I whispered. If that's what you want, then go. But know this, I'm shutting you out, completely. The next few days were at Belair. I moved out of our house and into a small apartment across town. The pain of Daniel's betrayal was overwhelming, but I knew I had to protect myself. I'd blocked his number, deleted him from all social media, and cut off all communication. My friends and family rallied around me, offering their support and encouragement. Kiralee, who had been there that fateful night, became my rock. You deserve us so much better, Emma. She told me one evening as we sat on my new couch, drinking wine. Daniel never appreciated you. I thought we were happy, I said, my voice trembling. I thought we had something special. You did, she assured me. But people change, and sometimes, they're not who we thought they were. I nodded wiping away a tear. I just don't understand how he could do this to me, to us. Maybe there's more to the story, Kiralee suggested. Maybe he was hiding something. Her words sparked a flicker of curiosity in my mind. Was there more to Daniel's sudden desire for a divorce? I decided to dig deeper, determined to uncover the truth. I began by going through our old emails and text messages, looking for any signs of infidelity or deception. Nothing stood out at first, but then I stumbled upon a series of messages from an unknown number. The conversations were cryptic, filled with vague references to meetings and plans. Intrigued, I decided to track down the number. 
A quick online search revealed it belonged to a woman named Rachel. My heart raced as I realized she was the same Rachel Daniel had worked with a few years ago. They had always seemed friendly, but I never suspected anything more. Determined to find out the truth, I reached out to Rachel, posing as a potential client interested in her business. We arranged to meet at a cafe, and I prepared myself for the confrontation. The day of our meeting, I arrived early, my nerves on edge. Rachel walked in a few minutes later, and I was struck by how composed and confident she seemed. We exchanged pleasantries, and I could see a flicker of recognition in her eyes when she realized who I was. Rachel, I began trying to keep my voice steady. I know this isn't about business. I need to know the truth about you and Daniel. She looked taken aback, then sighed. I was wondering when you would find out. So it's true? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. You and Daniel were having an affair. Rachel nodded, her expression remorseful. Yes, it's true, but it's not what you think. Not what I think. I echoed, anger rising within me. You were seeing my husband behind my back. How is that not what I think? She took a deep breath. Daniel and I, we reconnected a few months ago. It started out as just friends catching up, but it quickly turned into something more. I didn't mean for it to happen, Emma. I never wanted to hurt you. Hurt me? I scoffed. You destroyed my marriage. I know, she said, tears filling her eyes. And I'm sorry, but there's something you need to know. I glared at her, my patience wearing thin. What is it? Daniel was diagnosed with a serious illness, she said quietly. That's why he wanted a divorce. He didn't want you to go through the pain of watching him suffer. The revelation hit me like a punch to the gut. An illness? What kind of illness? Cancer, she replied, her voice barely audible. He found out a few months ago, and it's terminal. He didn't want you to see him deteriorate. I felt a wave of emotions crash over me, anger, sadness, confusion. Why didn't he tell me? I demanded. Why did he choose to hurt me instead? He thought it would be easier for you to move on if you hated him, Rachel explained. He didn't want you to spend the last years of his life watching him waste away. Tears streamed down my face as I absorbed her words. The man I had loved for ten years had chosen to protect me in the most twisted way possible. I need to see him, I said, my voice shaking. Rachel nodded. I'll give you his address, but please be gentle with him. He's been through a lot. Armed with Rachel's information, I made my way to the small apartment where Daniel was staying. My heart pounded in my chest as I knocked on the door, unsure of what to expect. Daniel opened the door, and I was shocked by how much he had changed. He looked gaunt and tired, the shadow of the man I once knew. Emma, he said, his voice filled with surprise and guilt. What are you doing here? I know the truth, Daniel, I said, my voice trembling. I know about your illness. He looked down, unable to meet my gaze. Rachel told you, didn't she? Yes, I replied, stepping inside. Why didn't you tell me, Daniel? Why did you think shaming me and demanding a divorce was the answer? He sank into a chair, his shoulders slumping. I thought it would be easier for you. I didn't want you to see me like this to watch me die. You don't get to make that choice for me, I said, tears streaming down my face. We were supposed to face everything together, remember? I know that he whispered. I'm so sorry, Emma. I thought I was protecting you. I knelt beside him, taking his hand in mine. You hurt me more than the truth ever could have. But I understand now, and I'm here for you, Daniel. No matter what, in the weeks that followed, I moved back in with Daniel to take care of him. The road to forgiveness and healing was not easy, but we faced it together. I learned to forgive him for the pain he caused. Understanding that his actions were born out of fear and love. We spent our days reminiscing about the past, cherishing every moment we had left. Despite his illness, there were moments of joy and laughter, a testament to the strength of our bond. Rachel visited often, and though it was awkward at first, we eventually found a way to coexist. She had been a part of Daniel's journey, and I couldn't deny the comfort she brought him. As Daniel's health declined, I stayed by his side, holding his hand through the pain. It was a difficult and heartbreaking time, but I wouldn't have traded it for anything. Being there for him in his final days was a privilege, a testament to the love we shared. One quiet evening, as the sun set outside our window, Daniel took his final breath. I held him close, tears streaming down my face, whispering words of love and comfort. 
The man who had once shattered my heart had become my greatest source of strength and inspiration. His passing left a void in my life, but I found solace in the memories we had created together. I knew that he was at peace, free from pain and suffering. In the days that followed, I struggled to find my footing. The support of friends and family, especially Kiralee, helped me navigate the grief and loss. Rachel and I even found a way to build a tentative friendship, united by our shared love for Daniel. Life after Daniel was a journey of rediscovery. I threw myself into work, took up new hobbies, and traveled to places we had always dreamed of visiting. Each step was a way to honor his memory and the love we had shared. I also sought therapy, which helped me process the complex emotions and find a path to healing. Through it all, I learned to forgive myself and Daniel, understanding that love and pain often coexist in the most unexpected ways. One day, while visiting a local art gallery, I met someone new. His name was Alex, and he had a gentle kindness that drew me in. We started as friends, sharing stories and experiences, and over time, our bond grew deeper. With Alex, I found a new kind of loved one built on mutual respect, understanding and support. He accepted my past and the scars it left behind, and together, we built a future filled with hope and happiness. Years passed, and life continued to unfold in beautiful and unexpected ways. Alex and I got married in a small, intimate ceremony, surrounded by friends and family. It was a day filled with joy and love, a testament to the resilience of the human heart. As I stood at the altar, I thought of Daniel and the journey that had brought me to this moment. His memory remained a part of me, a reminder of the strength and courage it took to face the darkest times. Shutting Daniel out had been a way to protect myself, but it also led me to uncover the truth and find closure. It was a journey of pain and healing, but ultimately it brought me to a place of peace and happiness. Life is full of mysteries and challenges, but it's how we face them that defines us. In the end, it's about finding the strength to let go, the courage to forgive, and the hope to embrace new beginnings. And in those moments, we discover the true meaning of love and resilience.